Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber, and today's guest is Terry Cochran. And Terry is an internationally known integrative practitioner and thought leader in personalized healthcare and longevity. She's developed her own methodology, the Cochran Method, which integrates a multi level nutritional approach, including biochemistry, nutrition, genetic tendencies, herbology, and counseling to develop personalized plans for her clients. Terry specializes in complex health conditions as well as working with elite athletes. She has a private clinical practice in Reston, Virginia, within the Metro Washington, D.C. area. Buckle up, everyone, and bring your pad and pen. You're going to want to listen carefully and take notes because my next guest and friend, Terry Cochran, is going to be talking about betrayal by the medical community, big pharma, the soil, water, food, and so much more. If you or a loved one is struggling with a physical issue, a mental health issue, an emotional issue, it could be tied to the food and the way it's being digested and absorbed. Get ready. Here's Terry. Okay, everybody, you're in for such a treat today because we have my friend Terry Cochran with us. And, you know, there are so many things I love about Terry and wait till you meet her. But I remember having a conversation about nutrition and all things health. And she starts saying words and going, (laughs) explaining things about like a vegetable, let's say, that I had no idea. So this is going to be an education and a half. So welcome, Terry. Oh, so good to be with you and your audience, Debbie. (laughs) Uh, So let's get started because I brought you on the show because you're so brilliant, of course, but you've had a couple of betrayals as far as your kids and things like that. So let's just dive in. Can you share some stuff? Absolutely. Well, if you would have asked me 20 plus years ago, would I be in healthcare? I would have said, what are you talking about? I was in uh, uh, corporate America and uh, had been in business for in real estate finance and strategic thinking for almost 20 years. But when I had my first child and he was born premature and I had been on bed rest for um, 10 weeks of the 40 weeks of this pregnancy, now we know I had certain gene predispositions that put me on bed rest. We didn't know it then. My body betrayed me during pregnancy a little bit. Um, He was born premature and the first 18 months were relatively uneventful, but then his body really betrayed him. And by the age of three, we were told that he would never be normal that he would suffer from brain seizures, he had life-threatening asthma, bleeding eczema all over his body, and that he wouldn't grow past five foot four. And at age three, he was barely walking and talking, and so they thought there was something really, you know, also developmentally delayed. And so um, we took him, I live in the metro DC area, we took him to pediatricians, to allergists, to endocrinologists, and all they could do for me is feeding him more steroids and bronchial dilators and medicines that were only proven, proving to weaken him further. And so his body had betrayed him because he had a perfect storm of being uh, born premature and then not having the the um, pharma- pharmaceuticals that were supposed to help him, it really dec- it created an endocrine storm. As a little three-year-old, he was being administered 60 milligrams of prednisone, which is like a bazooka uh, for a very small child, and that just regulated his thyroid and his um, and his uh, adrenals and his whole gut. And so then that created a whole melee of he needed antibiotics because his first year in school, he contracted strep 11 times. Whoa. So the system was just more about throw more meds, throw one after the other, and it was all the wrong stuff. So. And you know, it's such a hard thing because as a, as a new mom, we, we're just, we're new at this. We're assuming that everybody knows better than us, right? And here you are going to these well-meaning let's hope, uh, experts who are just pumping him up with, with all of these medications. At what point did you, did you kind of think, Hey, maybe, maybe this isn't right. Something's, something's not right. Well, by the age of five, he was really, so the first two years, he was such a gentle child and the steroids and the bronchial dilators, it was like, we had, he was like a jumping jack. He, we had to Velcro him, you know, onto the wall because the steroid was really attacking his nervous system and he was only getting worse. And we were 
always, I didn't feel like I could sleep through the night because I didn't know if he was going to wake up alive the next morning. His asthma was so severe. And I finally, a, a greater knowing came into my being. And I said, what if it doesn't have to be this way? I'm a solution seeker. I refuse to be living in this situation. What if there's something else out there? And that's when I started my, my journey of discernment to find his way back to health. And where did you start looking? Like, what was the first? So you, you have this realization and it's this like divine download, right? Of like, uh, I think there's, I don't know what it is, but I think there's got to be something better than this. So what, what was well, that next step? Because that's very scary too, because now you're saying, even though I'm, I'm, this isn't my wheelhouse here, I have a feeling that's not right. Exactly. And this is where I really want your audience to tune into the deeper knowing if we feel that there's something not right in our body, when we tune into whatever it is that we're thinking about and it feels constrictive in our body, our body is giving us a really deep and true signal. Do something else. Mm -hmm. Look at it differently. Mm -hmm. Go start researching. And so because I've been in risk management in the world of my corporate arena, I started looking at uh, this was before the age of the internet and uh, Google, of course. And so what I did is I started looking at his classmates and how they were manifesting in their health profile. You know, who mm -hmm. was really robust, who was less than robust. And there was this one child, um, when it was right around five, so it must have been kindergarten, where he, at the beginning of the school year, he was very weak and his mm -hmm. was terrible. And by the end of the school year, he had gotten very strong. And so I inquired with the mom, what are you doing? She directed me to a, an MD that was trained in holistic modalities. And I, she had a multiple year waiting list and I just begged my way into her office. And that mm -hmm. started, turned on the light for me. She was more, again, MD, but then she started talking about, well, you know, maybe there's foods that are involved. And that's when I started doing, going to the library, researching books, uh, and it but before you get there, what did that do to your whole paradigm, right? Because here's somebody saying maybe, and, and it's an MD saying maybe there's another way. I mean, I know when we're thinking one way and there's such a radically different idea now put in front of us, did, did it have you really question? I mean, I imagine there's a good amount of fear there because you're like, wait a second, they're supposed to know, but maybe you know better. Right. And, you know, there was a lot of fear because I wasn't the subject matter expert, but I was the mm -hmm. mom. And I believe, you know, it's that sacred bond between mother and child that, that has created, you know, survivalship throughout millennia. And mm -hmm. I just had a deeper, no, I really had, it was really a deeper knowing and a faith that there was a greater truth that was happening here and I needed to trust the process in the absence of medical evidence. Mm. And so when I started looking and linking um, the connections and there was one, one book and this was after I'd probably read about 50 books and researched uh, and continued to interview anyone and everyone. It was childhood illnesses and the allergy connection. And mm -hmm. it was this epiphany moment, my gosh, could the food that I'm feeding my child be poisoned to his body? And that was the beginning of his healing, true healing. So bring us back to that time. What were some shifts in, in what you fed him and, and what did you see when you well, did Well, again, he was very small. Uh, he had the bone density of an 18 month old at the age of three and he was barely growing. He was always the shortest in his classroom. Um, he had ter ter terrible allergic shiners, again, uh, just life-threatening asthma, bleeding eczema throughout his body. But when we removed, and now, you know, if I fast forward almost, you know, 18 years later, I understand the biochemistry and the genetic predispositions and all of that. And it just seems so, of course, to me, right? I just didn't know it back then. And epigenetics wasn't even a thing back then, which is how environment influences genes. But when we eliminated corn, which is a mycotoxin that turns on the strep that he was so engaged with. We eliminated uh, peanuts, again, an aflatoxin, also a carcinogen, and a, one of the top allergens, wheat, which has glyphosate mm -hmm. and has um, a big protein that he can't digest. Citrus, it's uh, oh, orange juice, wow. a particular Citrus. berry acid that was creating such deleterious um, effects to his um, eczema 
because eczema now we know is, in, at least in my practice, we link it back to candida and fungal, which he had mm-hmm. so much candida um, and, and a, a, a genetic predisposition for not being able to process sulfur, actually. So, no, and I want you to stop right there because I remember you talking about sulfur and I was like, what that you brought me into a universe I never even heard of. Tell us about, about that. How do we know if we're processing so sulfur or really not? a really big deal. And it's really been linked to um, learning disabilities, OCD, uh, depression, anxiety, also ulcerative colitis, um, irritable bowel, Crohn's, and even rheumatoid arthritis. And what used to be healthy for us, these, these uh, foods that have high levels of sulfur are no longer healthy for us because the Roundup that is sprayed on our crops has stopped the body's ability to convert these very, what would otherwise be healthy foods into its end product called sulfate. And so it gets stuck. And when it gets stuck in kind of what I call the gerbil wheel, we can't get it to its end product. It can trip us to be anxious, to be depressed, to be nervous, to have you know gut dysbiosis and all the things I just mentioned. And so one of my taglines for my business is, are you eating the right wrong foods? So mm. they're right, you know, in terms of what we think about being healthy, but there could be anything but right for you. They're actually very wrong for you. And we have a way of, of looking at that and, and getting you to that to that answer. And I think so often we just we don't consider the foods when we see something show up mentally, emotionally. We just assume it's it's a it's a mind thing, not a food thing. Oh, it's so much. It, I call food the alpha and the omega. And we work with a lot of mental health in our practice. We work with a lot of PANS and PANDAS, which is pediatric autoimmune psychiatric disorder, where we have four year olds that are trying to commit homicide and suicide. You know what? Can you go, because there's so much about pants and panda now, I, uh, but I think for a lot of uh, my community, it may be a little bit new. Can you explain that a little bit more? Tell us yeah, about so it. Yeah. So it is a brand new phenomenon. At first, the medical community used to say it's not real and it doesn't exist, but it is an acronym, PANS and PANDAS, which is Pediatric Autoimmune Psychiatric Disorder. So what's happening is it's an autoimmune disorder that's it's attacking the psyche the mental health, the mental stability of it's generally, it's typically children. And what we have found is that the strep, strep, which my son had very much uh, um, that in his system, um, has created an autoantibody that then dysregulates our neurotransmitters of dopamine and serotonin for executive functioning, GABA, um, mm-hmm. our norepinephrine and epinephrine. And so it's causing deleterious effects on mental health of children. And we now know that the gut biome and the brain biome are connected through our lymphatic channels. And so leaky gut, leaky brain. And Mm -hmm. we've taken a lot of kids. Um, I have one child in particular who could not be, could not go to school. He was too much of a danger to himself and his parents. I had two beautiful seven-year-old twins, these angelic beauties. And one of them was trying to do deep harm to her identical twin sister. Uh, And and the stories go on and on and on. And we've been able to be be very successful with um, pans and pandas, but we have to look at the food, peanut butter, pea protein, even chicken. And we'll talk. So pea protein is a, is an issue too. Protein peas can be mycotoxic. Uh, Corn specifically is mycotoxic. Uh, Peanuts Mm. for sure. We know the American, American tradition of peanut butter and jelly can you can no longer rely on that on being a good fat and protein source for your brain It can actually make your brain go sideways in all the wrong ways if you have Strep or candida and you have another genetic predisposition, but pans and pandas didn't exist Debbie when our kids were growing up I remember yeah, sure. So so bring us back to that time where you were uh eliminating certain foods from your son's diet. What were the differences that you saw? Like, how did you know, wow, that really moved the needle it's here on, on his almost health? Almost miraculous. Within five days of eliminating the wheat, the corn, the peanuts, peanuts the citrus, and the dairy, he started breathing. Mm-hmm. And wow. we, we knew because he had a peak flow meter. So we actually had, you know, real input output. What is his peak mm-hmm. flow showing? 
much better, mm -hmm. much better lung capacity. He was starting to sleep better. His eczema started to, to clear. He started growing. <laughs> he didn't look wow. so sickly. And that was a real game changer for me, so much so that by the age of 10, I decided that my real calling was helping other mothers who, was, who were told, your child would never be normal, to see the other mm -hmm. side of that. And so I quit and went back to school, and here I am. Right. And, and it, it had to be so incredible just to see, wow, a change in foods is really, is really helping, like all of these physical symptoms. Did, did you ever reintroduce anything to see how he would so, so what's really interesting is, and I really believe that this, I call it cellular re-encryption. So we eliminated these foods for quite a while. And mm -hmm. as his body was growing and healing, he can now eat most foods. And so because we, we created a new cellular memory for him. Now, if he overdoes these foods, you know, he'll do peanut butter in a, once in a very long while because there's a whole lot of reasons not to do peanut butter. Almonds and peas he can't do very well. Because um, because those have oxalates and mycotoxins as well, and he had he had such an underlying strep and candida that by the steroids actually created and exacerbated by the steroids because there's a sugar. Mm -hmm. But um, he's a foodie; he loves food. He's opting to be um, you know wild vegetarian, primarily plant based with some fish. He loves lamb. But what's so beautiful about this, Debbie, is he knows his body so well. And he can immediately mm -hmm. tell, oh, this didn't work for me today, or I'm going to eat seasonally, or I'm really gravitating towards this food, and I understand why. And, so, and, and does it show up right away when he doesn't eat? Uh, yeah, he can way. feel it. He can, he can feel he might get more lethargic. That means that his, you know, his body wasn't handling his insulin very well. Um, he can get nervous, right? He's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm agitated. Um, I don't feel right with this food, but the good news is that he has such a broad spectrum of food now. And just recently he's been doing phenomenally well where he was actually eating everything and anything. And just recently he moved to New York city and he got, there was the hottest summer and he was in transition and he got sick again and candida and strep came back and mm -hmm. we knew right away what to do. But he was like affected. And so, you know, in the short term, then we were going back to what's his original plan. And it just is amazing how his body uh, responded. And my staff and I have a naturopathic doctor that works for me. He's like, she's sh shared with me, boy, he's really your son because he knows he's so in tune with what's going on in his body. And he goes, she was, he was telling me, you know, how to direct, sort of directing kind of the flow of the consult in terms of, well, I think this is happening because of that. And she's like, he was right, right on. Well, you know what, and and good for him for just being so aware and and knowing. Okay, well, let me just take a look at at what I've just eaten recently, and maybe there's some something in there that that just truly isn't serving me well. You mentioned wild vegetarian. I know that's your that's your uh, concoction there, and your beautiful brand. Tell us about that. So, wild vegetarian is really what I believe is the diet that's for everyone and you alone because it is a diet based on your genetic blueprinting and your current state of health. And I've developed four archetypes under this wild vegetarian diet. And the subtitle for this diet is living as nature intended. So it is way beyond a diet because diet, the construct of diet has a negative connotation because a lot of people have feel like, felt like they've been betrayed by their diets. You know, that they mm -hmm. try a diet and it's just very disconcerting and then you feel completely um, unsafe. What is, you know, what is the truth? I tried this diet at work for my friend. Why didn't it work for me? And so mm -hmm. what's so interesting, and I believe novel, I know novel about this because it's been borne out by the thousands of people who see us in clinic uh, and those that have bought, have um, ascribed to this. It's really a lifestyle. Uh, they mm -hmm. get better. And so it's the big tenets of protein, fat, and sulfur for malabsorption. And so back to the sulfur and proteins become a big deal because our food supply, it's really going back. Our food supply has betrayed us because of the way that we have treated the food. So there is, an, mm -hmm. there is, if we talk about betrayal, the ultimate betrayal, I believe, is how this large farming, monocropping, industrial farming, what it has done to our macrobiology 
which is our environment, to what it is then doing to our microbiology. That is the biggest betrayal. We, it, it's such a sad statement when we can't trust the quality of our water, when we know that glyphosate, which is the active ingredient in Roundup, has known to, is you know proven to be a carcinogen. It is Dr. Stephanie Seneff out of MIT, who I've had the privilege to have had many a bantering of a uh, conversation with, you know, she's really, she's really blown the whistle on this, how she's linked it to MS, to autism. She's oh, linked wow. it to cancer, to so many things. And so I say, again, information is empowering and pesticides and herbicides are, they only worked for a little bit. And the consequence, the grave cost to us has been really deleterious. And so I always urge my anyone that listens to what we have to say is to vote with your food dollars and stop buying the foods that are creating such impact to our humanity and our planet. And I tell you, Debbie, I work with so many young and young adults and cognitive function has shifted. We aren't mm -hmm. availing ourselves of all of that, which we are capable because our neurotransmitters are being interrupted by the food supply. I recently had the privilege to sit among some of the top um, top within our military admirals and generals that are putting together a coalition for military readiness for the future. They shared with me that almost 70% of those eligible for the military do not meet the test because of either obesity or mental health. Oh, wow. That's a big deal. That sure is. And you know what? When you said that about just the food supply, when you think about it, it's like, of course, it starts with, with the water and the soil. And if all that garbage is going in there, I mean, what could possibly grow that's healthy? And then aren't corn and soy like the, the most highly you know, GMO foods? And then that's what the cows get. And, and we're, you know, we're eating that. It's not what they're supposed to be eating. It's like one big mess after it's a the big next. mess. And they're the number one, two crops grown in our country. And it's not just, you know, the, the, the crops themselves, but then the, the nitrogen runoff and that goes into our water and our fish are dying. And it's, you know, talk, talk about a, a huge betrayal. And so it really is incumbent upon each of us to turn the tide. And, you know, people, people tell me, uh, Terry, I'm just one person. Well, I will tell you, I had a, um, a young intern of mine who was betrayed in her school system. Um, she's very public about this, but she was, she was, um, she was attacked sexually and um, it really affected her. She came in as a senior. She's very public about this work, came in as a senior uh, in college to intern for me. And I understood, I could see something was wrong. And um, she, she opened up to me as to what had happened and how, how it had affected her whole college experience. And I said, well, you know what? If you believe that nothing is just for naught, and if you can go back and say that this is not okay, um, mm -hmm. she says, well, I'm just one voice. Well, she started in a national movement. She's got things no. before Congress. She became a fellow no. at that university. And that was one voice. And so, right. you know, the beauty of this, and she was betrayed by what she thought was she was being in a safe place. And so sure. sometimes if we can flip that and say, well, okay, I understand that this is the way it is. And yes, I, you know, the, the, there's deep betrayal here, but what am I going to do not to stay in this, not to perpetuate mm -hmm. this? Well, I think a big a piece of it too has to do with we just trust that why would, why would, let's say, these these companies do something to cause harm. We expect, well, you know what? They're they're trying to grow crops and, and it's just to make them grow bigger and better and that's it without knowing the other side of it. So I think so much of it is number one, we trust. Yes. And number two, you know, we think that everybody's well meaning. Right. So exactly. it's a lack of information. I think that's really it. It's a combination of trust and lack of information. And I, you know, and, and one of the things that I, I always lead, I always lead with trust, but in the, it, it has to be an informed trust. And so if I just need to know the why, and then I can feel safe because, and again, back into what is my body telling me? You know, if I know that a, I'm, I'm feeding my son this and he's responding like that, you know, in a lot of kids with ADHD, it's, it's pretty much, it's a sugar issue. We mm -hmm. have 70% mm -hmm. of the world's 
use in ADHD medication, and we have 4% of the world's population. There's something really not wow. right there. And so how do we turn that around? And so, yes, well, we're trusting that we need our, to put our child on ADHD medication because that's what our doctor told us. Well, maybe, maybe let's get informed. You know, I'm going to always mm -hmm. have that as an opinion. And it's part of my kind of being uh, my, my constellation of all sorts of information by which I will make an informed decision. So I'm picturing a young parent listening to this right now saying, oh my gosh, you know, what, what if, what if what's going on with my child really is a food issue? How would they know? I mean, what's the first thing they can do to even begin going down that road without doing all the research that you've done? <laughs> so, so, you know, the thing is that just start observing. The first thing is start reading your food labels. I say, if you can't read it, don't eat it. Um, start getting back to whole real foods. And then there's um, look to gluten. Gluten has been such a big problem here in the United States. Look to um, those things like corn and soy. Uh, look to the genetically modified products. Look to all of those foods that have dyes and preservatives. That really affects the, um, it really, really affects the uh, quality of how our brain functions. Wow. And, and it's, I love this because I think so often we do, we just, we don't consider, we just don't consider the food. We think, yeah. oh, you know, something's going on or you're stressed about school or work or whatever. And it could very likely have something to do with, with the food. That's, that's just, it's just so amazing. And, and even though it may be some pretty slick marketing or, uh, you know, we think it's a reputable company or whatever, it's, you know, I, I know even with me, I've learned, I'll read a study, but I want to look who's who's behind Absolutely. the study before I, I really think that information is power. And, and I also say that fear paralyzes the truth. And if we can step beyond the fear and consider it, if I get scared about something, maybe it's just my body giving me feedback that I need to lean in a little bit closer and learn, figure it out, get, gather some additional information, talk to your fellow neighbors, friends, go out, you know, the internet is, it can be a little, you know, information overwhelm, but mm -hmm. if you can do it and adapt it um, um, in a very methodical way and, you know, podcasts like yours and those that are in the healthcare space that are really trying to turn the tide of good and, and really uh, important information, this is where we turn fear into empowerment and we get our power back. Amazing. What do you want to make sure everyone knows before we wrap up? So one of the things, I, the, the most important things I want, I want to leave your audience with is that it, we've talked about, you know, all these things and, and all the bad stuff that are, that, that's happening. But what I, what I would say is that we are in charge of our own destiny. And if we, if we replace fear with information and hope and then action beyond that, nothing is impossible. Uh, my child's story, my both my children's stories are a testament to that. The thousands of clients that we see here every year that have been told, you will never have a baby, you will never walk again, uh, you will never get out of an autoimmune condition, and it's only going to get worse, you'll always have diabetes. No, let's, let's turn that tide. Let's get informed. Um, let's start doing our research. Let's not be swayed by fancy marketing or a uh, fear mongering. And, uh, there is hope there's hope. You know, Terry, I, I love that. And I always talk about turning your biggest crisis into your greatest gift. And, and here it was, here's your son, you're watching him struggle and, and your daughter too. And because of that, look at the research you've done, look what you've learned and look at the thousands, if not millions of people you've helped because of it. Um, I'm so grateful for your work. Where do we learn more about you? Well, you can learn about me um, through my website, uh, terrycochran.com, T-E-R-I-C-O-C-H-R-A-N-E.com. I believe we are empowered and informed through education. So my website has a tremendous amount of information. The Wildatarian Diet, Living as Nature Intended, you can get it on Amazon. We have a whole bunch of programs from kickstart detox to allergies, uh, eating counter seasonally. We've got our 
signature heal and seal program that it's a 45 day uh, kind of reboot to eating to your genetic blueprint. And then of course you can always come and see us. Uh, Terry, thank you so much. Your work is, I told you everybody, <laughs> she's, they don't make them like her. You are absolutely brilliant. I'm so grateful for all you do for so many. Thank My great so pleasure. Much for sharing your time with thank us. Thank you, Debbie. Great job. Yay! <laughs> Is that what you want? Awesome. Did you did you get was that good for you? Yeah. I mean, that was really I I think there is so much with the whole just like betrayed by like Monsanto, right. you know? <laughs> right? But I don't know no, if I can say, say that. that. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say. But you know, there's just so much so much there and um and a lot that's going to it's going to shake up people in the best kind of yeah. way. I mean, we have you know, been betrayed. We're like, here, eat this. It's on our grocery shelves. It's really nicely packaged. And then, and then our child commits suicide, you know? Right, right. Wow. Wow. Amazing work, my friend. You, I'm my so dear. thrilled for just all you're doing. I mean, really, I'm, I, it's so, you're in such an important space and everybody needs your Thank work. You. So happy to show you off as best Thank I can. You. Thank you. No, we've got a lot of great stuff. I mean, honestly, Debbie, a senior at NIH, I had a talk with a major university that has one of the top medical colleges, they're signed an NDA looking at me. I'm actually going to have a call with one of the top medical areas that come in from Canada. Everybody's looking to get a piece of how they can incorporate my work into yeah. their, into their world. Whatever happened with Mercola? Mercola and I were still, you know, he, he, I worked personally with him. He's very uh, a, a bullish. He's like, you got to work with Terry. You got to work with Terry. And he's very awesome. grateful for the work. Um, we're still friends. I haven't, you know, in terms of how can he scale me, I haven't really gone there yet because my uh -huh. tide has turned to all of this interest from just such big organizations. And frankly, with right. this break, I'm really trying to simplify, you know, just simplify okay. my work. And, and I, I say I have many suitors and I'm just leaning back and saying, if you really want this and part of my IP, then you have to make it easy for me. Cause there's no, wow. You know, I will, I want to yeah. get it out there, but it's going to be gotten out there in the way that there's a bigger, greater purpose there. And so I'm in no hurry and my practice mm -hmm. is doing so well. And there's so many opportunities. I love, you know, I love speaking on podcasts. That's, that's, I, I love that. So it's all going beautiful. Well, let me know how I can support you. You're, you're just, I, I love the work you do. And, and yeah. I know, I know my community is going to love Likewise. it. So no, you're, you know, I'm so yeah. proud of you. You're just, just, uh -huh. just kicking butt. <laughs> Just doing something really good with something really bad. So there That's you right, go. All right. All right. Big hugs. All right. Take care. Well, Bye, honey. Didn't I tell you, Terry is so brilliant, and it's because of her son's health challenges that she questioned the advice she was being given and took matters into her own hands. It saved her son, and it's helped so many people since, so we're so grateful. Find out more about Terry's work by going to terrycochran.com, and we'll have all of her information in the show notes at pbtinstitute.com forward slash podcast. Here's my biggest takeaway. We are in charge of our destiny, and when we replace fear with hope, we can do some amazing amazing things. In Terry's case, eliminating corn, peanuts, wheat, citrus, and sulfur from her son's diet was the beginning of his healing and the beginning of Terry's passion and purpose being revealed as well. Since we're in charge of our destiny, here's another proactive step you could take right now. If you haven't already, be sure to take the post-betrayal syndrome quiz at pbtinstitute.com forward slash quiz. And one more exciting announcement. Doors are open to the PBT Institute membership community. A Imagine everything you'd ever need to become your physical, mental, emotional best. Community support, certified coaches and practitioners you could schedule time with, daily classes on all kinds of interesting topics, curated experts teaching advanced strategies in the areas of health, mindset, spirituality, personal development. Imagine the most friendly, welcoming and supportive place to become your best all online. I am so excited to welcome you. Go to thepbtinstitute.com forward slash join to learn more. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to be with you next time. And here's to your breakthrough.